In this video we're going to look at a relatively new feature in SeekMonk which is the ability to create custom genomes when all you have to start with is a set of annotations in GTF or GFF format or even just a set of FASTA files. To do this uh, you can start off by going to File a new project but instead of selecting one of the installed genomes or importing a genome from our servers you're going to choose to build a custom genome. When you're building a custom genome you first have to supply a name of species and the an assembly name so I shall fill these in. These can be basically anything that uh, you like but it makes sense to keep them as real names if something actually exists. Now you can add in chromosomes into the genome that you're going to build. You can add these in manually but it's a lot easier to generate them automatically from the annotation or sequence files that you have. I'm going to start off by loading in data from a GFF annotation file. So I have a GFF file that came out of the assembly for this particular species and it will automatically identify all of the different regions in there and work out the length. Now the length in this case will just be the last position of the latest feature in each of these regions rather than the full length of the chromosome because this is just an annotation file. I can correct the individual lengths of these just by double clicking on here and entering a U number but that's going to be tedious to do that across such a large number so what I can also do is to read in a FASTA file which should have matching identifiers to the GFF file and that will correct the lengths to give me the full length of each of the regions that I have here. So I can select the corresponding FASTA file and that will now give me real lengths for every single one of these scaffolds. There's a couple more things I want to do in here. In this particular case I'm looking at a fairly rough assembly where I have a large number of scaffolds but also if I look further down I have a large number of just uh, unmapped contigs which are generally just sort of single reads or sometimes paired reads and I don't want to put these into my final assembly because they're just going to make things look a bit messy. So what I'm firstly going to do is to sort by the region name on here and get rid of all of these scaffold starting with C so I just end up with the real assembly scaffolds so I can select those and remove them if I wanted to I could also sort by the length of my scaffolds and get rid of the very short ones in here I'll keep them in for this case but uh, that might be a useful thing to do as well now even now I have tens of thousands of individual scaffolds in this genome and that's going to be too many to actually work with practically within SeekMonk. You'll end up with a genome display that will have tens of thousands of chromosomes displayed uh, and everything will work very poorly. So to make things work more smoothly what we're going to do is to group these scaffolds into pseudo chromosomes. So these won't be a, an attempt at making real chromosomes out of here they're just going to be a way to group scaffolds together. So if I tick this box it will assign each of these scaffolds to one of the pseudo chromosomes. It says it's going to make 25. It actually might make slightly more than that because it's only an estimated number, but it should be sort of 25, 26. Uh, and then those scaffolds will be placed onto a pseudo chromosome so that you'll end up with a sensible number of chromosomes, but you can still see all of your data. Having made all of these constructs now, I can create the genome. And what SeekMonk will have done is to write out. Uh, pseudo chromosome files for all of the chromosomes that we've constructed. It will also make an aliases file so that uh, it will know how to map data using the original scaffold names onto the pseudo chromosomes and it will also have copied across the annotations in the GFF file so that when we open up this new genome we'll actually see real uh, annotated data. Having made the new assembly I can now create a project from it It will load in the GFF file that I pointed to before and now I can see my pseudo chromosomes and if I look in the annotation tracks I can see there's actually a scaffold track so that I can even see the original scaffolds that I started from. If I want to bring in data that should be fine so I'm going to import a SAM file. 
This is a SAM file mapped against the original FASTA file, so its identifiers are not the pseudochromosomes in here, but they're the scaffold names. But if I import that, SeekMonk should know how to do the conversions and will map the data onto the new structure. I'll get some warnings on here because uh, I, these are the scaffolds that I deleted when I created the genome, so obviously those won't be found. But everything else should be on here. And you should be able to see that we get data all the way through here, but with gaps between the scaffolds and no data actually falling into the gaps. And I can now go ahead and analyze this as I would data in any other normal genome.